used to be. God's not called you backwards. He's called you forward. Don't get it blurry and don't get it confused. Somebody say amen. I'm not called to go back. I'm not going back. I'm not going back to the broken me. I'm not going back to the addicted me. I'm not going back to the angry me. I'm not going back to the, to, to the person that I used to be. Problem with going back is that's not where God's called you to go. Yeah. Isaiah 55, 9, 8, 9 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts your thoughts. Have you ever had a blurry moment where you did not understand God? What are you doing? This is not what I had pictured in my life. By 2020, I should have me three kids, a house, and a a car that actually works. And here I am borrowing cars and borrowing money and borrowing gas cars. And I'm not where I want to be. And and we can confuse the moment and be angry at God. Have you ever looked at your life and said, this is not what I thought it would be? These are the blurry moments that we are either going to trust what we see or we're going to place our faith in what we know. His thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not always who you thought were you gonna, who you thought you were gonna marry. God will yank that person out because you prayed, Lord, guide me. Okay, I'll guide you. He's out. And we need to thank the Lord that He did not give us what we thought we wanted and what we thought we needed. He's rescued. Come on, you know he's rescued you. You look back at his photo and you're like, oh, Lord, he rescued me. He rescued me. He rescued me. She in trouble, but he rescued me. (laughs) We need to thank God that he is in charge of our lives. Let Let me turn your attention to the book of Genesis, the book of Genesis, beginning the new year. Let's go to the the beginning of the Bible, the book of Genesis in chapter number 22. Genesis chapter, let me give you the backdrop. Uh, The favor of God has called Abraham and Sarah to have a child by the name of Isaac after waiting a long time. Listen to me. Abraham was 100 years old before he became a baby daddy. A hundred years, I don't even want to go there, but I just want to tell you that when you wait on God, it will not look normal. It will not look like everyone else. Quit comparing your Insta with somebody else's Insta. It will, your story is not going to look like that. What looks like a highlight is tragedy behind the scenes. But God's got something in store for you. God's got something powerful for you. So don't covet. Don't get angry. Don't get upset on how somebody else is living. God's got something good in store for you. Somebody shout good. God's got something. When he created something, he said it is good. He created woman and said it is good. God makes good things. He's got something good cooking for you come on now amen he's got something he's got a job cooking for you he's got a ministry cooking for you he's got a destiny cooking for you he's got a business cooking for he's got something cooking for i wish i had somebody crazy enough to give god five seconds of praise right now abraham abraham is a hundred years old when isaac is born and this is a miracle This is a miracle. Metabolically, this is a miracle. Scientifically, this is a miracle. It's a miracle on many, many levels. And then something happens. Have you ever been blessed and you had a thought, I wonder how long this is going to last? Have you ever had something good happening to you and you're like, I wonder how long. We're already starting with a negative mindset that something bad is going to happen instead of saying, I wonder what else good God's got for me. 
Turn to your Bibles to the book of Genesis chapter 22. I want to teach you three things about navigating through blurry moments that will affect our vision, that will affect our destiny, that will affect our calling, that will affect what God desires to do in our lives. And it happens in the story of Abraham. Look at verse number one. We'll read one and two first. It says this. After these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. He said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains which I tell you. And it happened that God tested Abraham with a request that was not logical. How many of you know that God does not operate with logic? Let me tell you, miracles are not logical or they would not be miracles. God does not operate the way you and I operate. We read it already. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not. He does not do things the way we want him to do them. We don't understand him. The first thing that I need you to write down as we understand the scripture, it's found in the verses that we just read. Clarity or confusion. When our vision gets tested, the Bible says that Abram, Abraham was tested. Is it possible that some of the things that we're going through is not because God's mad at us, but God's testing our hearts? He's testing our commitment. He's testing our fire. He's testing our passion. He's testing our tenacity and our dedication. He's, he's testing us. Abraham was tested when God spoke to him and said, Abraham. And Abraham said, here I am. Do you understand that when you translate here I am, it actually means something very significant. Abraham was actually saying, I am unconditionally available. If you translate this to the original language, Abraham was communicating to the Lord and saying, here I am by saying, I am unconditionally available to you. In Spanish, there's an equivalent to it that says, mandame, which means I am here to be directed by you. Whatever you want, here I am. God was speaking to Abraham and his immediate response is, I've got nothing else but to listen to what you have to say. I've got nothing else to focus on but to focus on you. Some of us, God can't answer our prayers because if he answers our prayers, we'll be stuck and committed to what he answered more than who gave us the response to the answer. Some of us were praying hard for a relationship, but then we get a boyfriend. Now we don't go to church. We get a car, and now we got no gas money to get to church. God answered, God gives us that job, and now we got to work overtime where we didn't even have a job. And we've got to be careful because what we pray for, God can see that it can deter us and pull us away. My God, my God, my God, my God. God promised Abraham a son, and now God wanted him back. Have you ever worried? That God would ask you something that you would be unwilling to give up. There was a young man who was in the ministry here and, and he playfully but, but honestly said, I'm too, I'm too concerned about getting close to God because I'm afraid he'll ask me for my Mercedes. I said, first of all, the Lord don't need your Mercedes because he's everywhere. He does not need a car. He does not need your car. He, come on, he, he's coming back on a horse, right? And it's not a Mustang, but he's coming back. And he ain't going to be needing no Mercedes to come back. Listen to me. God's not looking to take away from you. God's looking to give you and bless you and add to you. Verse 1 identifies the fact that God was testing Abraham. If Abraham was tested, we will be tested as well. 
This is a blurry moment because God asked Abraham to take his son, his only son. And then the Bible says this, whom you love. He's adding layers of difficulty. He's adding layers of drama. Do you know that this is the first time that the word love is used in the Bible? God is asking Abraham for what he loves. What do you love? And do you love it more than God? Because if you love it more than God, although it's not sin, to God it is a stumbling block and he can call it an idol. And let me tell you something, every idol must bow down before the presence of God. He's asking him. And it's difficult. It's a blurry moment. He's called to sacrifice his son. Let me tell you something. True obedience is tested when you're asked to do something you don't want to do. That's when you know you're really being obedient. When your boss asks you to do something you don't want to do, but you do it anyway. That is obedience. That is submissiveness. We cannot serve God based upon convenience. And if we agree with it, it is not about you agreeing. It is about you submitting. Submitting to his word. One time that Jesus was speaking to his disciples and he told them in the New Testament, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I tell you to do? In other words, Jesus was telling his disciples, quit giving me a title that I really don't have. There was, this reminds me of, a story that I recently read, there was a group of tourists that were visiting a palace and the tour guide gave them specific instructions. You must obey everything that I tell you to do because this is an operating palace. There are people that work here. They are ruling the lands. They, they are here governing the lands. You must do everything that I tell you to do because we are disrupting those that are at work here in the palace. The tour guide, upon turning the corner, saw one of his friends, Mr. Chamberlain, Neil Chamberlain. And when he turned the corner, he yelled out, Neil! And immediately, everyone that was, he was in the guided group, they all knelt down without, <laughs> without saying or doing anything because he yelled out, Neil! He was referring to the person, not to the command. But let me tell you something, that's what we need to do with God. Even if we don't understand it, we're going to obey it. Even if we're confused, whatever he wants from us, we are going to do it because he is the one that is in charge. Kneel. The Bible clearly shows us that there was... A big request made upon Abraham, and this is Abraham's response. Verse 3, follow me. So Abraham rose early. Somebody shout early. early. Come on, somebody shout early. early. Abraham rose early in the morning. Some of us, that's our resolution. We got to get up on time. Come on, we got to, I mean, we got to get up on time. Some of you have minutes calculated on when, well, I, if, I, if I just... If I don't iron my clothes, that gives me three. I mean, some of you have this calculated. How much time you have. And then an accident, like accidents don't happen. Oh, oh there's an accident. Let me get back to the scripture. He rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son, Isaac. And he cut the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. And on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place from afar. The second thing that you need to write down, the second thing that you need to see here is that to kill vision, remove action. If you want to kill vision, if you want to kill your plans, if you want to kill destiny, if you want to kill what God has called you to do, then do nothing 
about what God has called and placed in your heart to do and accomplish. Let me tell you something. God needs to remove grave clothes over some of our lives. There's businesses that should have been started already. There's songs that should have been written. There's books that should have been written already. There's, there's a, a th- accomplishments and inventions that should have taken place, but because of inactivity, our vision has gone dormant. And God wants to resuscitate that in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that Abraham trusted God so much, even though he couldn't see or maybe even understand, that he simply responded with immediate attention. The Bible says he rose early in the morning. He did not waste time, did not delay. How many of us have talked ourselves out of the voice of God leading us and challenging us and convicting us to do something that we question and say, God, is that really you? Do you really want me to talk to her? Do you really want me to give this? Do you really want me to go there? Do you really? And we begin to rationalize. We begin to, we, we begin to have you know, uh, uh, pros and cons. We begin to write things out. And after a while, we will ignore the spirit of God away from action because it does not make sense and it makes us uncomfortable. Do you understand that everything that God called people to do was uncomfortable? When was the last time you were uncomfortable enough to trust God, not with your abilities, but God's abilities operating in your life? Abraham responded, woke up early, and began on the journey of fulfilling the vision, the task that God had given him. The Bible says on the third day, they approached the place God wanted the sacrifice to happen. And then the Bible says this. I I, I need you to look at verse number four. Consider verse number four. On the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes. He had three days walking with his son that in his mind and in his heart, he knew he was going to have to sacrifice for three days carrying the assignment. Do you understand that he had three days to abort the mission? Three days to take a different path. Some of us, we've been on a, not a three-day journey, but a three-year journey. We're delaying where God has called us to go. We're delaying what God has called us to do. We're delaying and fulfilling the dreams that God has placed on our lives. Delaying. Three days and he finally reached the place. The place where he was going to sacrifice his son. Follow through is valuable. You see, many of us have vision, but we don't have follow through. Let me tell you something. Vision without action is wasted energy. You can have all the dreams, you can have all the goals, you can have all the aspirations, you can write down lists, you can cut out pictures, put up. If you don't do anything, it is a wasted energy. We've got to put feet in action. It's time to bring out the arrows. It's time to advance. It's time to take territory. It's time to move forward. It's time to, even if we're doing little by little, we are moving forward. God's called us to move forward. Obedience is like a computer password. It opens ourselves to the riches and miracles of God. I'm going to invite the keyboard player to come as we get ready to close. Consider After Abraham speaking to his son, they leave the attendants. And Abraham, he's 100 years old. And the Bible says that Isaac was carrying the wood. I don't know how old Isaac was, but he was old enough to carry wood. Abraham, being 100 years old, probably was not in the best physical condition to outrun his son if his son wanted to leave. There was confidence and trust on both both parties. His son even asks, 
Abraham, where is the sacrifice? I see the wood. I see the fire. I see the knife. But where is the sacrifice? Consider verse 9. So we get ready to close. Consider verse 9. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built the altar there and laid the wood in order to bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. He said, here I am. He said, do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. My God, how powerful. Number three, you write this down. Godly vision will always be met with provision. If God's given you a vision, he's going to supply for that vision. If God's given you a dream, if God's given you a task, he's going to supply everything necessary. The resources are not the issue. Obedience is the issue. If you do what God's called you to do, stop worrying about how and place your focus on what you will do in response to the call that God places on your life. Where God guides, he provides. You've heard, where God guides, he provides. Abraham, we read it, verses 9 through 10. He built an altar, prepared to kill Isaac, and an angel interrupted him. I want to thank the Lord for angels interrupting some of the things that we were about to do. I want to thank the Lord for angels interrupting relationships we almost got in. I want to thank the Lord for interrupting things that I almost drank, I almost smoked, I almost slept with, I almost, I almost went into places, I almost put things in my mouth. I almost, thank God, he, uh, come on, some of you, he's interrupted some things. He's interrupted some things. Thank the Lord the angel interrupted and was able to see the commitment that Abraham really had to God. I'm not suggesting to you tonight that you need to kill something or someone to show your love to the Lord. But I'm saying this, whatever God calls you to do, whatever God calls, wherever he calls you to go, you better do it because you'll never be at peace. No matter how much you make. No matter how desirable people think you are. No matter, no matter the facade of success you carry, you'll never, there is not a pill for peace. Amazon can't deliver. There's no droid delivering peace to your house. You can't drink peace. You can't fake peace. The confidence of knowing that you are doing the will of God, the author and the finisher of our faith. He interrupts him. Sometimes we can incorrectly assume that God is taking from us when really God is testing to give us more. Our devotion to God must be demonstrated and not just communicated. We just can't sing about how much we love him and not do something in response to show that we love him. We got this code drive coming up on Saturday. We talk about God's love. We need to demonstrate God's love. And I'm challenging you to something more. I'm placing a loving demand over your life. It's time for us to stop living for ourselves. The accumulation of things. Possessions that have possessed us. And it's time to do the work of God. Because that's what he requires and expects from us. I'm challenging you this Saturday, Highway 37, downtown Nolan Street. There is no address. We are under a bridge where people don't have homes, where people are cold at night, 
where some of you putting long johns on because you're, you're, you're cold even indoors. That's me. I'm cold all the time. How can we tell people about the love of God if they've never seen the love of God demonstrated? We have an opportunity. Bible says in verse 13 that Abraham was able to see a ram in the bush. And the ram was caught because of its horns. And God supplied a ram for Abraham. And let me tell you something. If he will supply for Abraham, he will supply for you. If he supplied the means and the resources for Abraham to honor God, God will supply the resources for your life so that God will be glorified. Abraham displayed incredible trust and confidence in God by not once questioning. He did not murmur. He did not bicker. He did not complain. He did not question. He simply responded with obedience. My God, how many of you know it's hard sometimes to obey? How many of you know we've got our own opinions? And sometimes we'll obey after we release our own opinions. I just want you to know how I feel. Listen to me. That's, that's interrupting the blessing of obedience by you spilling out your pride, by you spilling out. And, and Listen, quit spilling the tea and just obey his word. Follow him. Trust him. Serve him. It's like super glue. Have you ever accidentally got super glue on your hands i've heard stories of people getting it on their hands rubbing their eyes and now their eyes are shut their fingers are stuck they're not doing yoga but they're just, their fingers are stuck do you understand that fear causes our faith to get stuck when god's called us to be free I'm closing with this. Abraham experienced a mighty miracle through something that he did not see or understand, but he placed his confidence and trust. There may be people here tonight that are in a place in their lives where they are needing to trust God during difficult and confusing there some of there may be people here tonight that are going through a blurry moment in life just god i don't i can't see it's like water hitting the windshield and the wipers are going but you still can't see and you panic and you you, you know you're going straight but you don't feel like you're going straight and you want to just hit the brakes but God wants you to keep going but you can't see what's ahead and you're afraid you're going to hit something and you're afraid you're going to crash but God says trust me there are people here tonight that are going through blurry moments that need the confidence of knowing that God is guiding them we want to pray for you we want to pray for you God is guiding God is directing. He loves you too much to leave you broke on the side of the road, broke down. Tonight, we want to pray for you. I'm going to invite you to stand with me, please. I'm going to invite our hope team. We got, we got people here that are connected through our ministry, our next-gen associates. 